Hello everybody, it's me Sam here on Torrent Group Gaming and welcome back to part 2 of our craft book guide. So Dan, what are we going to be covering this part? Well, we're covering the integrated circuits, almost commonly known as ICs. Uh, these in craft book are compact components that perform the task for complicated circuits or do otherwise impossible things with redstone. Uh, building them and connecting them is simple, although it might seem tricky because there's quite a lot to cover. Um, the ICs in CraftBit come in families that correspond with their number of inputs and outputs, and that might sound confusing, but it's all on the wiki, and we're going to cover it, just so uh, we'll cover the basic ones, which are the most functional, yeah. and show you one working, which is uh, we'll show quite you what we've been So if we do warp IC, warp IC. we were taken over to what Sam's uh, produced earlier. Right, okay. Well, actually, no, I did one of them you here. I, uh, I will take my claim to fame here. Okay. <laughs> we'll start with the pipes first, mm. and then we're going to go into that. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, we have the pipes. So, like tech it and was it Billcraft or just pipes in? Uh, uh, well, or Industrial Craft? Or I think it's either Billcraft, Industrial Craft. Some mods. Red Power has pipes as well. You know, all those mods. So this basically is the without having a client mod installed version. Um, so this is wrong, isn't it? Oh, never mind. So what we need to do is have a two chests, or you have furnace and whatnot. And, Any container, right? Yeah, and we're going to have a sticky piston next to it. Then the glass is the pipe. And then we're going to have a normal piston facing where we want the output to go. So, in other words, this is very basic. It just takes it from here, sweeps it down this pipe, and puts it into here. Hmm. So, let's first of all just chuck it in. So, the pistons, this piston here works as a, a redstone engine, basically. Oh, I see. So, this actually is bound by clock. So we don't have a clock installed, and we're going to show you how to make a clock later. So for now, all we're going to do is just simply just toggle the input. So as you can see here, um, all the items are in there, and if we toggle a few times on the lever, you can see the test is empty, oh, yeah. and all the items go for the pipe. Now it does do it in one big job lot, so you can literally just send it. Items a load of items yeah. over. So yeah. like, that's quite handy. You actually. could use it as an alternative to that uh, minecart. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Um, there's that's also three little mechanics. Um, you can enable these and disable these. I think their default is false, but you can power uh, pumpkins to turn them into jack o' lanterns, so they light Very up. Nice. You can have redstone, which will set on fire when you light it, so this is quite useful for furnaces and stuff. Not furnaces? No. Oh, that could be useful for the cook pots. Cook pots or um, what's it? fireplaces, like decorative fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, we have, well, to make this, you put a glowstone block down, and then it will turn to glass when you reset it. Like so, in that turn. So this could be used for like street lamps. But this last one's become a bit redundant with redstone lamps. <laughs> but yeah. there you go. This was before so that was. <laughs> yeah, most of the stuff in, in here is before the new updates, so it's kind of a nostalgic feel, really. Yep. Right, so if we uh, move on to the actual like, proper ICs themselves over here. Okay, so these are the ICs, uh, root stuff, integrates circuit. We're going to start with the repeater and go back to this one later. Okay. Okay. So the repeater just works like a normal Minecraft repeater. All we need is a block. Uh, on the back of it, stick a lever. This is the output of the IC. And then on the front, we type in MC1000 in square brackets on the second line. So, just to show you, I uh, will just recreate that. You can find all of the uh, the IC numbers, like the MC you know, XXX, yeah. on the wiki. They have a nice detailed list of them on there. And it tells you what each one I'm doing. So, this one will just resend the uh, output further. So, when I Turn it output on. It'll turn the output on here. Obviously, turning the redstone torch off, and so on. So that just that's like a basic normal repeater you have in Minecraft. Of course, you can't set the delay. Uh, there might be a config for the delay actually. Can't think of it. And and if there is delay, it'll be on the second and third lines. Like I mean, third and fourth. Sorry. Right. Uh, the series similar one to this. The next one is the MC one thousand and one. This is the inverter. So basically. If the input is on, it'll be off. If the input is off, it'll be on like it is at the moment. So if we turn it on, it'll be off. And we turn it off, it'll be on. So that just inverts it. 
which is basically our not game, which is kind of quite useful. Um, the next one was a bit more interesting, which for now on there's uh, quite a lot of MCs, so we can't actually do them all. Yeah, there's literally yeah, hundreds. Literally hundreds and so, as we said, we picked out the most useful and the easy ones, I guess. Ones. The ones which make more sense yeah. to you. So, this one is the random bit. Basically, when uh, the input goes up, so it goes from off to on, it will either turn on or off randomly. So, for instance, um, every time we hit the button, the light should turn off 50 50 chance. So, if we hit that, it turns on. It turns off. Oh, nice. It turns on. 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 There we so go. So you could right, have like a flip the coin sort of thing going mm. on there. Uh, before we cool. move on to the next one, I, I probably should have moved this over here. Okay. But um, this is just one I was fiddling around in the wiki for, and I found it was pretty cool. Because normally in uh, Minecraft, I always have to set the time. I was actually looking for a plugin which would allow me to have the time continuously set to something. So as you can see, the sun is um, moving towards noon, getting towards the centre of the sky. Yeah. And when we're recording something like this, we don't want it to ever be night time. So if we flick the switch, you can see the sun will move all the way over there, and it won't move. It's stuck it's at 08, stuck. 0800 hours. And this is achieved by the, uh, the time set. I see. I see. Which is MC... Uh, is 0232. 0232, yeah. That's quite a long way so. down the page. Hmm. So yeah, and if we um, right click it, it will continue to move again. Yeah. There we go. And so that's handy when you're just working on like a massive build or something, you just always want it to be there at daytime. Yep. Just have the time continuously set. So you can have that. Okay, so moving on, we have the creature spawner. So this one has some um, actual values to it. So if you just type in on the second line MC1200, the third line has the, um, the the monster type, so you have chicken, zombie, and anything you like, there's a list in the wiki. And finally, we, on the third line, we have what type. So for instance, if you want a baby one, you can just put baby. I put baby lock, which will lock the chicken as a baby forever. So when we hit the switch, there you go, a baby chicken gets spawned onto the block. <laughs> and spawn a lot of them. So now uh, Dan's showing the next one. This is just a Zeus belt, this is just fun really. MC1203, and hit the button, and it will light in the block. Ta -da. You missed. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were doing that. Yeah, right. very nice. Now, this is quite a useful one. It's the container collector, uh, MC1209. So, if there are any items on the block, like so, next to the sun, when the output goes high, like you just pressed, it will go to the chest above it. So for this you could have um, like a, a skelly spawner and it could be destroying the skeletons and their items could fall next to the sign and then you can oh, just that's nice. yeah. put them all in the chest. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Uh, this is one of my favourite ones I think. It's the flamethrower MC1252 oh, yeah. and then on the third line is the distance. So what this will do is satellite of 20 distance all in front of you of the block like so and you can turn it off and on at will. So this is quite cool if you want to make a trap or you could you could potentially put this around your entire base or mm. something like that. Yeah, stop mobs in there. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. And finally we have the programmable fireworks uh, MC1253 and on the fern line we have the name of the firework fire um, I don't know why I call it W, it was just quick to type in. But I'll show you how to configure the actual fireworks yourself later. And there is a fireworks folder in the craft bucket uh, directory. But here you can create your own firework display. So when I turn the signal on, it oh, will nice. run the desired program and will show the fireworks. So for this, you can make, as you can notice, they're all similar fireworks because. They're all the same, basically. There's mm. probably one over there for some reason. A small one. But you can change what fireworks have. You can have like the creeper ones or like different colours. You can have different ones going off at different times. And you can basically program your own fireworks display this way. Okay. Very nice. So most of these are self-triggered. There's also auto-triggered as well. Um, 
things like the clock and stuff. So let's, I'm actually going to show the clock because I think that's uh, quite useful. Yeah, yeah, that's an important one. Whilst so you're designing we... that, I should probably introduce into the next thing we're going to do. Is as Sam said, um, these all these are all very useful by themselves, but it's when you start combining them when everything starts to, starts to seem really awesome. So um, as Sam's just making a clock, it might seem useless by itself, but what we're going to show you uh, in a second, or what we're going to build in a second, and then show you what we did earlier, is um, something pretty cool. So, right. So yeah. the clock here is just a standard self-triggered one, MC0420. And on the third line, we have the um, time in ticks, it, it toggles, and then the first line, or the fourth line, we have the delay. Uh, I set that at zero, just because. As you can see, it's a dumb, simple clock. Every five ticks, um, it will turn on or off, like so. And that will come in useful in a little bit. Let's just try that. Indeed. And as you were saying, let's see what this is here over here. Uh, well, let's build the basic one first. The basic one? Yeah. Just to show, um, to show a few of the signs like, working in harmony big together. Box and like, oh, what's did, did we want to go there first? Okay, what's fine, inside? let's go. I want to see what's inside. <laughs> let's see what's inside. Okay. So this combines a lot of different RCs, as you can see here. And also the pipe system. <laughs> okay. So what we have here is, first of all, I'll just show you what ones we've got. So on this block, we've got the planter self-trigger, MC0244, and it also do, it'll take seeds from the chest above, which there are none in there, and it will plant them in a radius as defined. Um, you can obviously customize what things are planted and the radius of the plantation and any offset, I believe, but we just left them as default. Uh, cultivator self-triggered, MC0234. Uh, this will cultivate the land, make sure it's all tilled, and require uh, a hoe in the chest above. Irrigation MC0238. Uh, this will just irrigate the land, turn it into um, was it soil with water, irrigated yeah. land, and it will just require water in the chest above. And terraforming will place uh, bone mill every now and again in the blocks, so you can actually increase the your crops. Uh, right, so I just removed all of the seeds yeah. so we can see this in action. Okay, so do you want to put some um, seeds and bone meal and... What chest do we need to put it in? Oh, in the this one one's below, yep. Right, so if I put the hoe in, and then a load of seeds. As uh, Sam, if you look behind you, it's automatically sorting it out. There we go. So it's all about to be tilling the land and placing the seeds as we speak. Uh, some bone meal in there. some bone meal in there. Uh, the promo is actually doing it over here as well, unfortunately. <laughs> it, nice, it, yeah, it'll, it'll place it in most places. Yeah, so it, it will do the radius. For some reason it started from this side because the um, sign is on this side, but if we wanted to do all the same, we could just place all the signs on one side. Mm. So, there we go. Wow, <laughs> this is great. It's just like the extreme of all of the ICs put yeah. together, well, some of the ICs put together and seeing what you can actually achieve with it. So, that's what it is. So. Is it enough? Bone meal in there? We need some more bone meal. We run out of bone meal already? Yeah. That's quick. <laughs> it does use it up. As I said, you can change the radius of this. Let's just chuck some water in there as well, so we irrigate the land a bit. There we go, they grow a bit faster, as you can see. So, we've managed to make tilling, harvesting, growing and stuff. We need to actually harvest it as well. So we've got this harvest uh, self trigger here, MC0239. And what this will do, it will harvest um, all the weeds around it and place it in the chest above. Uh, the chest above is actually empty. So <laughs> it hasn't managed to harvest anything yet because it's used up all the bone yeah, mill. Keep it in bone mill and we'll see. And what we've done here is we've put a pipe, so we've got the sticky piston here, the glass going down to another chest here. And we've stuck a clock here. So this will let's do, it will toggle the sticky piston allowing it to take the items from the chest and check it down the pipe. So it's got some more in there. Oh, it's just, might have seen there we go. The wheat appears there for a, a, a well a quarter of a second and then it will go back into this chest over here. And then I can take the seeds from here, put them in the input chest as we like to call it, and that will work. So basically this is the 
input uh, output chest and that's the input chest and of course you can probably have another pipe leading to the input chest so you don't have to trample your crops to do so. Uh, trampling crops has been removed. Has it? Yeah. Oh, well there you go. <laughs> really? Yeah. Shows how much I know. Well anyway, that's that's the way you can use all the nice things to make an automatic wheat farm. Uh, you can make all sorts of things like automatic bone mill farm. Yeah, the, the possibilities uh, are absolutely <laughs> literally limitless with all the ICs you can combine yeah. together. It's fantastic. So it's quite good. Um, just literally, just you can think of what you want to make and literally make it. So, anything Great. else we need to Yeah, I, I just need to, need to put some more bone mill on this. Okay. It consumes so much. You need like a really good skeleton spawner to keep this active. Well, it's because it's so large, but yeah. That's what I wanted to say, really. Um, the limitless. Uh, it's limitless, the things you can do in craft. Indeed. It's such a huge plug, and there's no way we could possibly cover it all. But I think we've covered the bits we found most interesting and the bits which uh, would need some setting up. So, I think we. Uh, Sam, Sam will go over in the config. Yeah, I will go in the config I think we should also upload this world as well, just so you can have a look as well at all the different things. Yeah, and you can have idea. a look at this uh, half so as well, if you want to get some ideas. Might not, because that might be helpful. So yeah, thanks for watching. This has been me, Sam Carantar, Blue Gaming, signing out. See you later, guys. Alright, hello everybody, it's me, Sam here from Wolf Gaming, and today I'm just going to go over the installation and configuration for the Crawford plugin. Okay, so first of all, link will always be in the description. Um, here's the dev bucket page. You can find information um, on the wiki here. And here's all the information on how to use Craftbook. Um, you've also got all the permission nodes, translations, and FAQ here. So if you have any problems, you can always come here. We're, in your, we're interested in installing it today. So you want to download the um, button here. You'll get a .zip file. It'll take a few seconds to download. So you just want to simply drag and drop the, sorry, you want to drag and drop your craftbook.jar into your plugins directory as you normally would. As you can see there, it's already there. Um, you will also require world edit, so you will need to put that in your plugins directory. However, if you don't want to use world edit, you can just put it in your uh, root folder directory like I've done here if you don't want to use world edit as a plugin. Um, with craftbook, does it will come with other stuff? Obviously, readme license, read those, um, but you won't require them in the plugin directory and also if you want to use the chairs so you notice me and Dan were sitting on chairs last time you need to have protocol live and then the version um, I don't think I'll change anytime soon okay so load server up make sure it's all running okay just see craftbook loading craftbook and then the version and then down the bottom it will register um, recipes for cauldrons um, you know, normal shape plus and shape recipes, and uh, we'll see. It should all be fine. So that looks fine to me. Um, let's just have a look at the config. So let's start that there. So go to plugins, and there should be a new folder called Craftbook. Open that up, and you should hopefully see three uh, directories, and then about nine files. So let's just start with the config.wow because this is one of the main parts. Right. Okay, so this is the main configuration for Craftbook. Uh, there is some information on the wiki about this uh, configuration. Unfortunately, not all of it is up to date, but um, hopefully, I can go over anything that isn't. Okay, so first of all you have the enable circuits, mechanisms and vehicles. You notice in the videos we did it in three stages just to show you the difference. We started with the mechanisms, moved on to the vehicles and did the circuits. So you can actually set these to true or false, whether or not you want to use it or not. Uh, the language by default is English, American. Um, you can change this um, as you require. There are some links on the wiki for different translations of the plugin. Uh, no op permissions, so ops won't automatically default to having access to everything. You've got safe destruction, so for things like gates, bridges and doors, it won't um, destruct. Um, they have to have the sufficient blocks 
to the destroyer, so that's good to have true. Uh, use plot distance, that's nothing really too much to worry about, just rounds all the distance equations. And then you've got also have integration with the WorldGuard plugin. So if you want to check the WorldGuard flags as well, if you're using the regions, then you can set this to true or false when you're using mechanics. And finally, you have indirect redstone as well, true or false, so you can allow redstone to trigger a mechanism indirectly when they're not actually facing the side. Okay, now we move on to the individual um, sort of configuration for each item. First of all, we have circuits. So first of all, we have the integrated circuits. First of all, you can, <laughs> I said first of all a lot there. You can enable or disable the, uh, the overall, whether or not you want to store them in the catch, um, allowing shorthand of the ICs, and then the maximum radius on the IC for the configuration. So 15 is a good number. Uh, wiring. Now you notice in game we managed to toggle nether axe to have fire on top, pumpkins to jack o' lanterns and glowstone to glass. You, these are automatically default false, but if you want to use those features, you have to set these to true. And finally, we have the ID on the glowstone off block, which is glass, so you can actually change that as well in the config. Uh, pipes. Also, notice at the start of the um, circuit that we talked about pipes with the glass. You can enable or disable that here. You can also have diagonal pipes as well if you so require. Um, that's the true or false. And then you've got like, things like stack per move and insulator block. So you can set that to true or false and then the ID of the block. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the mechanics. Hey guys. So we didn't actually cover this in game, but this will just has different sort of settings. For zombies and skeletons, different AI movement and whatnot. Uh, you can have that on, true or false, and then you can set whether the zombies have it or skeletons have it. Uh, the ammeter, this was the coal, uh, where you can right click and see how far the redstone's current is running. So you can name that true or false, and then the item used uh, by default coal. Uh, the area, uh, we will go over where the areas are stored in just a second. And uh, you can enable that true or false. Um, and then whether or not you want to use redstone to toggle it on and off, um, whether or not you want to use semantics or a default uh, area type, and then you've got the maximum number of blocks it can be used, so 5,000, and then how many uh, areas a player can use, so maximum 30, increases, decreases, whatnot, and then short and long names, so if someone had a really long name for an area, it might be difficult to put on a, um, a sign so you can shorten the long names. Bookcase again might not be as useful, but you can enable it here, true or false. You can also enable where you want to shift and then well, sneak and right click to read it. And then you can also change the string um, which says when you pick up a book. And um, there is also a file in the plugins directory or craftbook directory called books.txt, I believe. Yep, and this will store all of the books um, that players can read. So you can change that to how you want. Uh, add new books, delete them, change them, whatnot. Quite a big file. Okay. Um, and bridge. So this is one of the first things. Why well, it was the first thing we did. So enable that true or false. Whether or not you're allowed to use redstone with it. Uh, the maximum length. So this is how far the bridge can travel. So 30. And then the maximum width of the bridge as well. So this is either side of the sign. So five. And then the blocks you can use. Um, so you got like glass there and uh, the ID so you can add more or delete them or not. Cauldron, so you can enable cauldrons and uh, set them to true or false. Um, cauldron recipes I will go over in just a second. Um, chairs, as remember, I covered this, this is just allowing you to sit on um, stairs so you can enable this to true or false, whether or not you want to require the player to sneak to right click. And we've also got the block IDs here, so these are just all stairs and you've also got the regen health so when a player sits down on um, a chair you might want to for instance let them heal up which could be nice in like a park or something if you want some RPG element or something that could be a nice idea uh, chunk anchor so you can enable whether or not the chunk anchor resists so this will just keep the chunk open uh, whether or not you want to use redstone to do this and then you can check chunks as well command sign as again said the command block might overtake this 
but uh, you can still enable it and save it here. Uh, cooking pot. So this is the one where we have netherrack and a chest above it. So you can enable that to true or false. Whether or not you want the cooking pot to run on fuel. So we right clicked it with coal to um, stock up. You can also cook ores in the cooking pot. So you can put some ores in it and it will turn it into ingots. And then the sign click open. So we notice that when we right click the sign open the chest above it. Um, we can disable the, or enable that here. Custom crafting um, and dispenser recipes we can change true or false whether or not to use custom recipes. Uh, I will go over how to do it in just a second. Uh, custom drops, so you can set that to true or false. These are the custom drops are allowed when um, destroying stuff and stuff. There is a config on that I believe. Uh, door, so this is the start of what I did. Enable this to true or false. This is just very similar to the bridge, as it just works vertically as opposed to horizontally. Uh, elevator, so you can enable or disable using the elevator, or whether or not you want to use buttons with the elevator, could be a nice idea. And whether or not you want to allow the looping on the elevator as well. Um, all that is configurable there. Um, gate, um, this is the one with the fences, so you can enable or disable that here, whether or not you want to use redstone. How many columns um, is the max of the gate, and then you can whether or not you want to actually limit it. And then you've got the block IDs here, which you can use to make kits. Um, hidden switch. So this is the one where we right click to wood block and it put a switch on the other side. Quite like this one. You can enable to disable it here, and then whether or not you want to be able to click it on other, any other side. Uh, Legacy cauldron. I'm not going to cover that, just simply true or false. If you're interested in that, then look at the wiki. Um, most people won't be needing this. Uh, lightstone. Um, lightstone is the glowstone we had. You can right click um, anywhere basically, and it'll tell you the light level. So if you felt it's glowstone, you can change the ID there. Light switch, whether or not you want to use a light switch we covered, and then the maximum range of the light switch, so 10, that's 10 blocks either side. I uh, can increase that, decrease, and then the maximum number of lights it will switch. Map changer, again near the end we showed you this. Um, this just allows you to change the map ID. Uh, paintings, now this uh, we didn't cover, but you can actually scroll through paintings. So you can have all the table this switch here. All you have to do is place a painting and right click it and scroll and it will change it. Uh, payment, you can enable or disable that there, true or false. Snow, another thing we didn't cover, but you can enable piling of snow by placing snowballs. Uh, you can also trample on the snow and this will cause it to remove. And then you've got like realistic things, high piling, jump trampling, where you want to jump on it and whether or not you want to be able to slow down on snow and stuff. So you can enable that all there. Uh, I'm not sure how well this is working in the current update, but uh, maybe they'll update it in the future, or maybe I just didn't notice. Um, teleporter, you can enable or disable this to true. Um, this is the one we just teleported to block. Uh, you can actually disable whether or not it requires a sign, and then you've got the maximum range uh, that can be teleported. Uh, zero is just infinite range. EXP Sora, so this is where we right click a block and it will turn it into. Um, potions of experience and then you've got all oh, potions of enchanting sorry and then you've got the block ID which is default it's mob spawner and you can enable it or disable it here. Uh, better physics as again the only thing here is the falling ladders which are pretty cool. Um, you can enable or disable that here whether or not you want the ladders to fall down as shown in the video. And then finally we have all the better pistons. Uh, you can enable or disable each one individually or the entire lot true or false. Okay, now we have the vehicles. So we just have the minecart and the boat. These are all the IDs for the block. So, for instance, we had the uh, boost block as a gold ore. You can change that here. And then we have things like soul sand to slow it down, um, wall block to reverse it, station block as um, obsidian as well. And there's also some other stuff here like dispenser block, lift blocks, which we didn't actually cover. but. Uh, are all available here and you can change the ID. You've also got other things like enter on impact so we notice if we were standing in front of a empty minecart it will automatically put us in. 
and whatnot. Um, and what else have we got? We got the max speed modifier. So this will increase the maximum speed uh, um, a what's it called? A mine cart. That's what we're talking about. Can go up. And then you've got other things here as well. And then we've got the boat as well. So you've got remove entities. So it will kill other boats when hit. And you've got like things like no crash, so boats won't crash. Uh, remove entities, other boats as well. So this is will kill the other boots when you hit it with another boot, uh, boat. And then you've got break return boat. Um, so whether or not you boat drops when you've broken it. Just don't remove entities will kill things when you hit it. So you run a boat into something, it will remove it. And then finally, we just have the nice uh, small things left. We just have the um, ST think ticks, uh, self triggered think ticks. So this is how many ticks. Uh, don't change this too much unless you know what you're doing. Uh, notify updates. So you can actually do a CB update to download the new update and whether or not you want to. Uh, notify people with a permission node to do so and we also have the advanced bot checks as well um, you can set this to true or false um, when you're using protections such as world guard or you're having experience issues okay so that's the main configuration um, let's look at what we have left to do so we have areas now this is where all the areas would be stored, all the toggleable areas. As you can see, you'll have all the names of the players. Um, I'm the only one that created one, it's just me. And then the schematic we created in game, so the wall schematic. And again, if you don't want to use schematics, it will have a area uh, file. Uh, we also have fireworks. Now there's two types of fireworks. I will provide a link in the description on how to make. Um, your own firework display a bit more intuitive but um, here you can add fireworks displays and you can see here you can set all the different types of um, firework whether or not it flickers, the fade, the colour um, whether or not you have a trail and stuff and the location and so here is where you would program um, a firework display and then use the IC we showed you in game to do so uh, and MIDI files, we didn't actually show you this, but you can place MIDI files here. Um, I'm not sure if that still works, it should still work with the uh, creating of uh, IC uh, MIDI file players. Uh, books, I've already showed you. And then you've got Cauldron Recipes, the TXT and Cauldron Recipes at YML. I believe one of these is for the Legacy Cauldron, so we won't cover that. Let's just look at the Cauldron Recipe. Okay, so you've got the name of the recipe, so Carl, you can change that there, uh, the description, and then you've also got the ingredients to put in the cauldron, and then what you get out of it. So at the moment it's just wood, one wood, and uh, one stone, and it will give you one of the book ID 12, which uh, ironically I've forgotten now. But this is how you work, and you can just simply copy and paste and make a new one. You can add new items to it, so instance. Um, to I can add, for instance, to cobble and uh, stuff like that to the cobble recipe as required. Uh, crafting recipes at YML. Okay, so there's two types of crafting recipes: there's shapeless and shaped. Um, the shapeless ones, uh, as shown here, doesn't matter what um, whereabouts you put it in the crafting table. Or, or in your your crafting little inventory slot, um, it just wants you to have all the things. So here we have the ingredients. So the wood uh, with data value two, which is the light wooden plank, and you want one of those, another one of those, uh, brown wool, so wool with a data value twelve, and then where it will return as a result. So here we have the end stone. Um, this is where it will return. Um, so you can change that to that uh, and then they also got the shaped uh, recipes as well so this is a shape 2x2 two two. Um, this works slightly differently as instead of having the number you'll have a character so you can use any character here um, 
A and B are chosen here, so you need wood with data value 2, light wood again, and then brown wool. And then, then we have the shape for this one. So you'll need to replace two uh, light wooden planks on top, and then underneath you have um, two beads, which is the brown wool. So here you can change the thing. So for instance, I, if I wanted it to have um, three light wooden planks and then the brown wool in the bottom center, I can change it just like that. And now I can change it again here. And I can obviously add a new ingredient and then have it as say C and then place it where I like. And then again, same result as before. Uh, custom block drops here, you can just set all the custom block drops. I didn't, I believe when we did the actual video, we didn't actually set any, that's probably why it wasn't working. But um, you can add more blocks here. So, for instance, here, um, well, let's use this one for instance. When you when you oh, I can just explain it. So this is the block ID you're destroying, and then if you have any data values, um, you can add it here, and then it, this is what it will drop. So for instance, it will drop two six four uh, times two to three. So it will drop the ID two six four, which I've forgotten. I think it's uh, yep yeah, diamond, and then you can drop two or three of those, and it can also drop. Uh, iron uh, four to five of these and you can have stuff like that um, and then you can see the examples here to format them so we can have another one for instance one times four to five that will drop um, four to five um, stone blocks when you destroy stone but obviously you can change that to however you like and then we have the custom mop drops which is works in a similar way um, as you have here the creeper instead of the uh, block ID so you have names and then it works in a way you have the ID uh, any data values and then the minimum and maximum required and you can also add more using commas like before uh, in US this is the um, language file so you can do that there and obviously update it when you need to and finally we have ICConfig which just has an, a few configurations for certain ICs. You'll have to look these up and see which ones do and whether or not you want to set these to true or false as required. So I believe that is all. Um, it's a very, very big plugin, but uh, it's been around since, well, since HMOD. So it's very, um, it's, it's just, everyone knows it really. Um, and it's just a great plugin. So thanks for watching. It's been me, Sam here for Weekly Gaming, signing out. Uh, next one is super push. Now I was a bit confused with this one setting it up because I forgot to read some finer parts of the wiki. But this allows you to push air. Whoa. So what it's doing is it's pushing five blocks as defined on the sign and it includes uh -huh. air.